Hi, Tony Sycamore here, Senior Market Analyst at IG in Australia. Last week, the tech-heavy NASDAQ and the S&P 500 extended their winning streaks, marking a fifth straight week of gains. This was largely driven by NVIDIA's phenomenal earnings report, which saw its share price surge by 15% after its earnings were released. As we enter the last week of May, the NASDAQ is up a stunning 7.84% month to date. The S&P 500 is up over 5%, and the Dow Jones has added 1,253 points. The gains for these benchmark indices this month have come despite hawkish Fed speak and resilient data, which has seen the rates market continue to scale back expectations of Fed rate cuts this year. However, with earnings season winding up, macro data will likely retake the spotlight. This week's key macro events will include speeches by several Fed speakers, consumer confidence, personal income and spending data, and of course, the Fed's preferred measure of inflation, the core PCE price index. Let's take a look at the charts of the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ to see where they are as they start this new week. Okay, so we saw another new high last week in the S&P 500 cash, which you can see here up to 5341. But in last week's video, we highlighted this trendline resistance coming from the 4818 high back in 2022, which picks up the March 5264 high and came in last week somewhere around 5310 to 5320-ish. The S&P closed at 5304, so just below that trendline resistance, which we highlighted. Additionally, what you can see here is a loss of momentum candle, which generally reflects some indecision. And we think that indecision is something we need to pay attention to, more so in terms of it lines up with this trendline resistance. So what we are seeing here potentially suggests that, look, this market has run particularly hard up five weeks, as we mentioned, but it could be running out of steam. And if it were to break below 5,200, which is the support through here, that would be your first indication that the S&P 500 has potentially started a deeper pullback, more so if it was to break back below 5,180. So that is how the S&P looks on the weekly chart. It's a different kettle of fish for the NASDAQ, however, and you can see that this 18,674 high, which we've drawn this trend line from here, Uh, the NASDAQ has closed well above that trend line. I think this is quite important because it does reflect the idea that the NASDAQ can continue to outperform given that it is made up of those tech-heavy stocks, which you mentioned, like NVIDIA and, of course, the other stocks in the MAG7. How far can it go to, you ask? Well, I think you can probably look up towards this 19,250 to 19,300 area, which is The trend line I've drawn from off this July 2023 high picks up some highs here in March, and then you push it forward, comes in, as I said, around 19,300. So looking for the NASDAQ to potentially extend those gains due to its outperformance. And when we think about what we would need to see for the NASDAQ to signal that it has run uh, potentially a little bit out of steam, it would need to close back below, firstly, this trend line resistance, which is now support. And of course, this 18,464 high, that would be your first indication. If it were to break below 18,000, well, that would definitely be a signal that something is happening, which may see a deeper decline. That are the levels we're watching for this week. Thank you for listening and have a great week ahead. 